Good morning motorheads and welcome to the video and welcome to a year in motorcycles for 2023. This is where I look back on all the motorcycles that I've ridden and reviewed on this channel so let's get into it. Okay, so first up, I rode the BMW R1250 GS Trophy. Now this was Tim's own personal bike that he allowed me to take out and film this video. So you get 136 horsepower and 143 newton meters of torque from the BMW Boxer Twin Engine. And I've probably said in the past how the Boxer Twin Engine is one of my favorite engine configurations besides the triple. Now this bike was an absolute dream to ride. It's planted, it's powerful, it handles really, really well, and even at low speeds, this bike was really easy to maneuver. And it's easy to see why the GS sets the benchmark in the adventure bike market, the granddaddy of adventure bikes. It kicked off the craze back when Charlie and Ewan rode the 1150s in the long way around. And in my opinion, the GS has always stayed ahead of the game along the adventure bike market. Now, BMW have updated the GS to the 1300. And initial reports that I'm hearing and reading tells me that this bike once again sits at the pinnacle of the adventure bike market. All in all, a great bike and a complete package. That was the BMW R1250 GS Trophy. So next up, was the Harley Davidson Street Glide ST. Now the Street Glide comes with 103 horsepower and 168 newton meters of torque. And you get a lot of that low down grunt from that classic V-twin engine. It's a comfortable bike with great wind protection from that big bat wing fairing. You get some great creature comforts. Obviously it comes with bags and it does come with a stereo that you can pair up via Bluetooth with your phone. Now we all know ground clearance can be a bit of an issue when it comes to cruisers, but unless you're really gonna throw this thing into the corners, on my ride on the day that I took the bike, I found absolutely no issue with it whatsoever. Now I found it could be a little cumbersome at low speeds, but all in all, this was a great solid touring motorcycle from Harley Davidson. And that was the Street Glide ST. So next up, I rode the Benelli Leoncino 800. At 76 horsepower and 67 newton meters of torque, I was very impressed with this motorcycle. It's a great, solid, naked roadster. It looks good, leaning towards more of the retro look of the motorcycle, but I was very impressed with this bike. You get plenty of punch from the parallel twin cylinder engine, easy gear changes, it handles really well, it handled everything easily that I threw at it on the day. This was a really good bike. And with Eichmann just wrapping up at time of recording this, I saw online a lot of the new bikes that Benelli are releasing across their range. And I'm hoping that some, if not all of them, will be available in Australia, and hopefully I can get my hands on some because they look really, really nice. So, as a bike that pretty much does it all across the board, it's hard to go past the Benelli Leoncino 800. So next up, I rode the Aprilia RS660. Now this motorcycle with 100 horsepower and 67 newton meters of torque does sit at the premium end of the 600 sports bike market. It looks absolutely fantastic, hence why I dubbed it the sexy Italian. Now 100 horsepower for a bike this size is absolutely killer. This thing is fast, it handles really well, and it has a fantastic quick shifter. Now Aprilia's attention to detail is second to none, and you can see that over every aspect of the RS. And this bike does confirm the fact to me that you do get what you pay for. All in all, it's a great motorcycle that sits well above the current class of mid-size sports bikes. That is the Aprilia RS660. 
So next up, I'll ride the Benelli TNT 125. This thing has 11 horsepower and 10 newton meters of torque from a single cylinder engine. It's lambs approved and it's the most craziest fun you can have on a small capacity motorcycle. Now this particular bike had an aftermarket exhaust fitted to it and it sounded absolutely awesome. And there was no shortage of people turning their heads when a bloke like me comes flying along on this tiny little motorcycle. I had the best fun. Now if you like to commute or do small distances and you're after something a little different, then definitely go ahead and check out the TNT 125 from Benelli. So next up, I rode the Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR, or as I called it, the Gentleman's Racer. Now this bike has 178 horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque. Now ultimately underneath this motorcycle is a Speed Triple RS with clip-ons and a fairing. It has a great spread of power from the 1200cc triple engine. It handles well, it's got fantastic suspension, and as we know, the DNA, the essence of this motorcycle, is being proven by Triumph time and time again. The fit and finish and the build quality from Triumph is second to none. The one little thing I did find, that it is a little bit of a stretch to the bars. Because primarily, this is a super naked underneath that's been turned into a bit of a racer. But all in all, this was a great bike to ride with plenty of power and plenty of good looks from a top line manufacturer. That was the Triumph Speed Triple 1200RL. So next up, I rode the Triumph Scrambler 1200XC. Now I rode this bike in conjunction with being a corner marker for the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Now this bike has 89 horsepower and 110 newton meters of torque. Now this particular motorcycle was already a few years old, but after riding it, it reminded me just how good it is when I first rode the new models when they came out. It has plenty of low down grunt from the parallel twin engine. It's comfortable, plenty of suspension travel, and just a good solid motorcycle. And a great retro look. Now Triumph have updated the Scramblers for the 2024 year, so do keep an eye out if you're after a 1200 Scrambler from Triumph. The next motorcycle is the Benelli TRK 502X. So this motorcycle has 47 horsepower and 45 newton meters of torque. It's a good bike with great road manners. It's very comfortable and it looks so much bigger than your average 500cc adventure bike. It has good power from the parallel twin with smooth, easy gear changes throughout the gearbox. It comes with a lot of accessories as standard with this motorcycles as where other manufacturers you would have to put it down as an option. It's probably a fraction heavier at over 200 kilos for this bike, but in my opinion, it's still worth a look when you match it with a lot of other bikes in its class. That was the TRK 502X from Benelli. Okay, so this last one still made it onto the list even though technically it's not a motorcycle. It's the Yamaha YDX Moro 07. Yamaha's e-powered mountain bike. So this comes at 85 newton meters of torque with a top speed of 25 kilometers an hour. Now when I mean e-powered, it's more e-powered assist because it's not a twist and go type like a motorcycle, this thing will actually match your pedal stroke. So depending on what settings you have it in, this thing will match your pedal stroke. For instance, if you're pedaling up a steep track or a hill or a dirt road. So I had the opportunity to take this bike out in the trail and I had so much fun with it. And I'll tell you, it made me look a lot fitter than I already am. And that is a really big bonus. Now, if you do ride dirt bikes, by no means will this be a substitute for your dirt bike, but this will definitely be a complementary addition to your stable. And it's well worth checking out. That was the Yamaha YDX Moro 07. Okay, Motorhead, so that was just a rundown on the nine motorcycles that I rode and reviewed on this channel for the year 2023. 
So this year I decided to do something a little different and I came up with a basic sort of rough scoring system based on build quality, innovation, design brief, value for money and fun factor. And these opinions are based purely on my knowledge and my ability. I have around 20 years writing experience but I'm in no way a motorcycle journalist and I'm definitely no way an engineer. This is just my opinion on what I like and what I find works for me with my ability. And so, my standout bike for the 2023 year is, drum roll, the BMW R1250 GS Trophy. A comfortable, capable, complete motorcycle that would suit a lot of different riding styles. So the honourable mention would definitely have to go to the Benelli Leoncino 800. A good, solid, naked roadster that does everything you could ever ask of it. So Motorheads, thank you so much for watching and supporting me throughout this year. I had so much fun bringing you these videos. And I look forward to bringing you more motorcycle reviews and more motorcycle content next year. Thank you so much to the dealerships who trust me with their motorcycles and let me take them out and film these videos. So thank you to City Coast Motorcycles, Black Metal Moto Co, Fraser Motorcycles Wollongong, and of course, Motor City in Wollongong. As always guys, I'd be so interested to hear what you think, so please leave a comment, let me know what was your favorite bike from this video for the year of 2023. As always, I'll leave all links and relevant information in the description. So Motorheads, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, have a great festive season and a wonderful new year. And I'll see you out on the road.